This is the Trekimonda SLR, as ridden by Lizzie Dargan, the newly crowned Paris-Roubaix champion. I'm going to take you through the spec of the bike, pick out all the cool details, and then I'm going to measure it, weigh it, and do that all-important free-up sound check. The frame set is the Amonda SLR, and it's designed as Trek's lightweight racing do-it-all bike. It's constructed using 800 series OCLV carbon, and it's finished in this incredible team colorway. Really do like that, especially the design intricacy at the front of the bike. The wheels are Bontrager Aeolus RSL 37s, and these are the tubular versions paired to Pirelli P0 tubular tires. And these are, in fact, the SL version with the lighter inner tube in there. So the inner tube inside these tubulars is the TPU super lightweight version to reduce weight and also reduce rolling resistance. At the center of the wheels, we've got the disc brake rotors, 160 at the front and 140 at the rear. The super cool thing about the paintwork on this bike is it's very thin to keep the weight as low as possible. And in some areas, the paint is just one layer thick and in the sunlight, you can in fact see through the paint all the way down to the carbon layup, and it looks super cool. The bike is built up using SRAM's red ETAP access group set, disc brake of course, and is 12 speed. And at the center of the bike, we've got the red chain set, which is using 170 millimeter long carbon crank arms, 50 37 tooth chain rings, which also incorporates the quark power meter. Now, the super cool thing about this chain set is that it is machined from one single piece, which reduces the weight and increases the strength. Attached to the crank arms are Shimano Dura-Ace pedals, and also just tucked behind the chain set is a neat little chain catcher to try and keep the chain securely in place over bumpy terrain. At the rear of the bike is the cassette. This is a 10 all the way up to a 33 tooth, providing a really wide range of gear suitable for all of the different terrains. Moving forwards and up on the bike, we have that Trek Bontrager Ajna saddle. Now an interesting point here is that Lizzie actually beds a lot of these saddles in pre-season and then hands them all across to the mechanic. So she rides each one for about a month or so on her training bike to make sure they're all gonna feel exactly the same regardless of whether she gets on her race bike, her spare bike, or her training bike. We can see here this saddle is white, and this dictates the fact that it is in fact her race bike. It's 144 millimeters wide. It has the seven by nine mil carbon rails to keep the weight down and make it as lightweight as possible. And in the center here, we've got a large central cutout to help keep Lizzie comfy on the bike. And an interesting point also is that the mechanics have actually put little Tipex marks on the rails and on the seat post itself to dictate exactly where it is so there's no risk of anything moving and they can get the position set up just right. One of the interesting parts about the Amonda frame set is that it has a completely different system at the seat tube area. So the seat tube extends further up from the frame and then the seat post itself sits over the top and it is in fact called a seat mast. Something also really cool at the rear here is we can see Lizzie's number holder. This is a special design purely for the Amonda frame sets which Trek supply to the race teams. It has a small little number holder mount bonded onto the frame in place before the frame is painted. And this is completely different to anything you'll ever see on a production model, for example. Move into the front of the bike. We have this super cool one-piece Bontrager RSL carbon cockpit. It's got a 120 millimeter long stem, which is negative seven degrees and 38 centimeter wide bars. And we've got this super, super fresh white bar tape. Again, like I said, dictating the fact that this is Lizzie's race bike. And the interesting fact about these handlebars is that they have semi-integrated cable routing for the brake hoses. This enables them to be super hidden and smooth the airflow to make the bike as aerodynamic as possible, but it also makes the mechanics life much easier should they need to replace or service any of the components. The brake hoses themselves route then internally to the frame set using this specially designed top spacer on the top of the headset. And a really cool fact I spotted is just tucked to the back here are the words go, go, go on the back. I really like that, it's a nice little touch. Finishing this bike off is a K-Edge alloy out the front mount to hold Lizzie's Wahoo head unit and display all the stats and data that she requires when she's racing. And also we've got some Bontrager Triple X Lite bottle cages. These weigh just 20 grams and are constructed from the same OCLV carbon as what the frame is made out of. 
couple of cool little details which the mechanics have told me about is how they glue the tubular tires on. So they just apply one coat of glue to the rim, a coat of glue to the tubular, and then one single coat to stick it all together. This secures the tire to the wheel as best as possible, but also reduces the need for any unnecessary glue to reduce the weight as well. An interesting point here at the seat mast is the small Trek Segafredo sticker, which the mechanics use to designate the height of the saddle on each race bike. So I've had the GCN tape measure of truth out and I can confirm the nose of the saddle to the center of the handlebars is 55 centimeters. Lizzie uses a saddle height of 68.5 centimeters and the saddle to handlebar drop is 6.5 centimeters. Now this bike feels incredibly light, but how much does it weigh on the GCN scales? Let me just zero these. Oh, 6.9 kilograms super light. Right, next up, let's get this rear wheel up to speed and see what we've got for our free up sound check. Oh, lovely. So there you have it, the bike of Lizzie Dygan. Hope you enjoyed taking a closer look at it. And if you have and you've got any thoughts on the bike, let me know in the comments section down below. And remember, for all things racing and more pro bikes, subscribe to GCM Racing.